now I want domination. I want complete growth to the to the moon, and I won't stop until I die. And so um, that's that's the thing. And I want to mention one thing though: is coming from the affiliate marketing background has been probably my biggest key advantage. Uh, it's a hidden advantage in the marketplace because I understand how to monetize. I understand ROI. Um, I understand how to buy media. Um, you know, I bought hundreds of millions of dollars in media by myself and with my team. Um, and so when I'm thinking of a product, I'm thinking, what were the best affiliate offers that I used to promote? Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Robust Marketer Live Edition. I am here with who I like to call the Elon Musk of e-commerce, uh, Josh Elizeche. Uh, I haven't actually had a face-to-face -face chat with you yet. I've been running in this in a circle with you for, for two years here, and just following your, your journey, following your growth as an entrepreneur has been extremely inspiring. Uh, so I'm super glad just to, to carve out a few minutes to talk with you today. You're obviously going to be uh, one of our headlining speakers at e-commerce mastery live in Las Vegas on January 10th. And I cannot wait to hear and feel the impact you have on the audience there. So welcome to the robust marketer, Josh, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I'm uh, in a, a random shopping mall here. And so that I might be shaking a little bit, but uh, other than that, you'll get a good view of everything that's going on behind me. Nice. Oh, it's beautiful. And what city are you in? I am in Orange County right now. Orange County, beautiful. So we're both on the Pacific time zone here. So, okay. So I'm sure most people know you. Most people will have seen your tweets. They know that you're the guy behind Snow, uh, a beauty tech company. But why don't you just, just for, I, you know, you've been through this before, but give us the nutshell of your hero's journey. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I started about 12 years ago. Um, so I was really young and essentially... Um, you know, a lot of people say, what, what, why did you start? What got you started? I just wanted to make some money. I just want to help my family out. And, uh, you know, I learned how to program, uh, as a teenager. And then once I started, um, you know, uh, telling teachers about it, oh, you know, I've got a friend that runs, you know, this type of store or this uh, company and they need a website. And so once I realized that I could, you know, make okay money, uh, you know, making websites and programming, for me, the rest was history because I realized that I no longer wanted to be a doctor or go to medical school. I thought that, uh, or I realized that I could help a lot of people by creating opportunity, creating jobs, creating products that people love, and providing services that really help businesses grow. So that was kind of the, uh, you know, the epiphany for me at a very young age, and then uh, that kind of transpired into building uh, essentially what became an ad tech platform, kind of an early version of. Uh, at Espresso and like uh, a few tools mixed together. Um, and we had a, a service layered on top of that, a managed service. So essentially, we were an agency that turned into a productized service with a managed service on top of it. Um, and the reason why is I realized I wanted to sell that business so that um, I could focus on building, you know, really long term brands. And uh, Snow, uh, which just is finishing its first full year of business. Um, you know, is uh, we've got about two and a half million monthly shoppers. Um, and so we're really excited to take on uh, the oral care and skincare space as a beauty tech um, uh, company. And so I wanted something that had a very large uh, market, something that was ex uh, incredibly challenging, um, something that I could really bet the house on and really take the millions of dollars that, that I have and, and just throw it all on the table and go all in. Um, and that's what we're doing and we're having uh, a blast doing it. We're enjoying it. Um, it is crazy riding a rocket, um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It, keeps, it, it gives me so much life and so much uh, passion and purpose. Uh, and it does for my team. I can't do anything without them, our, our customers. So just this is, this is entrepreneurship at its core. I mean, this is the dream. And I get to wake up every day and live the dream. And it doesn't get easier, it gets harder, but I get better. And I love that growth challenge. Holy shit, that's, uh, that's an amazing rundown on, on what you're doing. Super excited. I'm so, it's so cool that you, did, you started this at 13. You sort of saw, you know, you, you, and you came at it from that engineer's perspective, which is so cool. You're like, hey, here are the tools I can build. Look what I can build. It's like a world of digital Legos just like laid themselves out in front of you. And you put everything else to the side and went ham on it and have been doing it ever since. 
that idea of taking your win and not just like fucking off to Thailand and going on a, you know, a spiritual journey necessarily, but just like chopping it up and throwing it on the table and going at it again. And I guarantee you have that Elon Musk style perspective that you'll do it again, even, you know, even beyond, hopefully beyond, you know, the, the massive success you have with, with snow. So that's super, super cool. So I want to talk a little bit about the other thing that I think is really cool about snow. I was just reading uh, about how you describe it as beauty tech. Which to me, I think is, is a really, it's, it's sort of that um, mind frame changing or, you know, in order, so you were talking about all your criteria for your products that you wanted to do. You want, you wanted to do something that actually evolved the genre or the form in a little bit of a way by adding that tech component to it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, you, when you start it, you start a business, you kind of, you know, we started off as snow teeth whitening really because we had developed uh, a, a formula yeah that allowed us to, to uh, deliver results like in the dentist without sensitivity. And so uh, one of our ingredients um, that, that is proprietary, um, I, I learned a trick from Apple. And Apple, if you try to, if you go to China and you try to knock off Apple's box, their packaging, the exact material, Apple, one, they sell so much, but they lock down the entire supply chain. So that material, um, you can't actually buy it. It's like you literally cannot buy it. So I said, okay, what is something that we can own the supply chain of so that no one else has access to it? And the, the biggest advantage I have against these corporations is the fact that I started off uh, with nothing, first of all. Um, there's a face to the brand where you don't know who Crest is. You don't know, like, who's the founder of Crest? Who's the founder of Colgate? And so in this day and age, customers want to interact with the CEO, with the founding team. They want to know who are they buying from. And whether it's just one of our celebrity partners or it's myself or it's our customers before and afters, people want to respond in a social media way. So for, for, for us, we realized very quickly that the oral care market um, was lacking innovation and that it's, it's very expensive. It's very um, because of the, the duopoly of Colgate and Crest and there's Glaxo. Uh, Smith Klein, GSK, very, very large companies, almost impossible to penetrate at a retail level. And I said, I want to take that challenge on. And I always say that, uh, you know, these companies are in trouble because uh, the fact that I'm so young, I have 50 years to snowball this thing, no pun intended, until the point that it's, it's where I want it to be. And the other problem they have is that uh, I'm already rich. So the fact is, I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to buy another Lambo. I'm not trying to buy another Bentley. I've already got all the shit that I want. Now I want domination. I want complete growth to the, to the moon, and I won't stop until I die. And so um, that's, that's the thing. And I want to mention one thing, though, is coming from the affiliate marketing background has been probably my biggest key advantage. Uh, it's a hidden advantage in the marketplace because I understand how to monetize. I understand ROI. Um, I understand how to buy media. Um, you know, I bought hundreds of millions of dollars in media by myself and with my team. Um, and so when I'm thinking of a product, I'm thinking, what were the best affiliate offers that I used to promote? And they had real celebrity endorsements, not just throwing Dr. Oz on a random page. And I said, how can I actually get Dr. Oz to be my partner in the business? And then feed that to our affiliates, feed that to our team and say, yeah, actually, you don't need a Photoshop Oprah on there. She actually is a partner of ours. Use the shit out of her image. She wants you to. And so that was huge on the celebrity side. And then creating patented technology where we, um, we globalize the patents so that we can shut down anyone that even comes close to it. Um, and then having really, really unique branding so that... Um, people can't rip you off. If they do, you can shut them down because you have trademarks, patents, all that. But that instead of ripping you off, they want to work with you. And I think if you create a brand that is so cool, you as an affiliate, you're like, oh my gosh, like I could crush this in my country. And we get hit up all the time saying, hey, can I run this? Can I just run ads in Indonesia? Um, you know, and you can pay me as an affiliate. And so now we're expanding internationally. We ship to 180 countries. Because people see the brand, they see the technology, and they're like, I, I respect this. Like, I want to I want to make some money there. And that's why when I think of our margins, our business, I'm thinking, how can I make other people rich? How can I make my team successful? And how can I have the margins so that retailers make more money selling my product than anybody else's? 
driven by the brand. So that's kind of the, the, the epitome of all that, or uh, the epitome or the uh, manifestation of all that is the focus on bringing my tech background. And I love beauty. I've been selling beauty for 10 years, taking beauty, taking tech, infusing the two with a brand, celebrity, co-branding, and pushing that to the moon. That is has always been my dream. And I just didn't know that it was going to be snow that was going to combine those two industries and give me the vehicle to push us uh, to push us to these new heights. Um, and it really is, it's a cutthroat industry. And wherever there are margins, the sharks will come. Wherever there's blood, the sharks will come. The more blood that's there, the more aggressive you have to be. And so right now I'm focused on being an alligator in the river. I'm focused on being an alligator in the lake uh, and, and instead of a shark in the ocean. And so we have very key retail partner distributions. Uh, you know, we look at Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, where they don't sell toothpaste. They would never sell Crest. They would never sell Colgate. But, uh, you know, a Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather champagne mouthwash with Dom Perignon in a glass bottle, you bet they want to sell that. That's crazy, man. I love this attitude. You know, I'm always interested in this dichotomy of the old industry and the new industry and the, the, the performance marketers coming up with their tactics that they've learned through being scrappy and dirty and all these things, but realizing that those are the, the, the trials that, that will that, that have huge, huge impact in this dinosaur industry of, of marketing where they're not measuring these things. They don't have as much of a focus on the on the key metrics that we do. But, but it's funny, you know, I've always talked about, okay, you build a CPG brand and then maybe one day you get lucky enough to get bought. Maybe maybe Johnson Johnson who can't innovate as well as you can, can't be as nimble, comes along and gets bought. But your perspective is like, I'm already rich. I don't need to get bought. I'm coming for you. I'm going to drink your milkshake. Uh, and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. I got to say, but I really, really like it. It's from, it's from the, you know, the art of war. And, um, you know, I study, uh, you know, I spend time studying the Nazis, you know, I spend time studying Genghis Khan, uh, you know, some of the controversial, um, you know, dictators and, um, really, I mean, even if you look at Trump's campaign and you look, you know, you try to understand how you develop influence and essentially if you develop, develop influence and use it for good, you use it for bad, obviously, but if you use it for good, you gain power very quickly and power to, to move your brand forward. Um, and, and then people want to be a part of that. You know, uh, we've been able to attract some of the best team members, some of the best agencies. Um, you know, I'm just, I, I wake up every morning. I'm like, they push me to become a better leader, to create better products. And it's just, con it's a push like a seesaw back, forth, back, forth which is why we're able to do things in record breaking time where it takes other companies years to do what we do in six months as a small team, because it's not about how many people you have. It's about, you know, can they push 10 times? I remember watching the, the video from Jack Ma of Alibaba and he's talking about Silicon Valley and this is in 1999. And he's like, um, you cannot be afraid of, of someone in Silicon Valley because if we are focused and we know what we're doing. We are worth a hundred of them. And, uh, and that's the way I train my team. And these are warriors. We come in and it's the art of war. And so I always say, look, if you're building a business simply to sell it, um, that's like getting married to get a divorce. Um, you know, it's like you should not go in thinking I'm going to get married, but I can't wait to get a divorce. You have to be married to your business and you have to be married to your mission, your cause. And if you're in the right industry, there are hundreds of industries like oral care that have infinite scale. If you are thinking big enough, you will never want to sell the business. You, in fact, the, the thing I'm most terrified of is dying because I love my life so much and I have so much I want to do and grow and I want to lead this company as big as I can um, that I'm just afraid of, of dying. You know, like I literally, I'm like, it's, it's like having a kid. You're like, okay, I got to drive a little safer. I got to, you know, you know, not drink as much. I got to do, you know, Literally, you, it changes your life because your purpose becomes overwhelming in a good way. And you realize you're humbled by the growth potential and the opportunity. And as being a leader of really good people, because you become embarrassed if you're not growing fast enough for your team. And you will lose team. You will lose good people if you're not able to walk the walk. So that that all encompasses why we say build a business that's sellable, uh, but never build a business just to sell it. Um, that's not the mentality you want to have because you're going to make gambles that don't make sense. You're going to be short, uh, short sighted, uh, instead of thinking the long-term game and say, look, this is my brand. 
you know, so what if I got to spend a million dollars? So what, so what if I got to spend this on that? Because I know that it's going to build the brand equity and it's going to make all of us proud to be a part of this brand. And there's that kind of um, intangible benefit of being proud of talking about what you do. And I feel like a lot of, um, let me get away from this crying baby in the back. <laughs> Speaking of children. Um, and it just, uh, you know, being able to make those bets, those gambles, um, really strengthen you and, and to be able to talk about it at Christmas dinner uh, and, and say, what do you, you know, what do you do for a living? Uh, and if you can't, if you can't have the passion and excitement around it, now I get it. You got to pay bills, you, you know, you've got a family, whatever it is, cool. But, but you should be on the side, a project that makes you light up inside. And, and when it's big enough and it's good enough, shiny object syndrome does not exist. And it's like, if you're, you're dating a Victoria's Secret model who also is a, a IQ of 180 and also is is loyal and, and your shiny object term doesn't exist when your eyes on the prize. And so I try to keep my eye on the prize and everything else kind of shuts itself off. But just making sure you have that pinnacle goal. Every human being has a mouth. And if you can create a product that people will buy more than once, that's as big a scale as you can get right there. Every human, every mouth. And they use it multiple times. So set your set your goal on the highest star, and then that is one way to stave off shiny objects that are very cool. Okay, I have a, I have a practical question here. What was something that you learned? Not this hasn't been practical. What was something that you learned this Q4 and holiday season that you're now experiencing? What's because that's the coolest thing about our industry is how you're always an expert. You're always pushing the boundary and and learning new things and growing as an entrepreneur. What's what are some things, ways that you've grown this holiday season? With your yeah, business. Good question. Um, yeah, so this holiday season, I mean, we have, um, I mean, we made we made more money in a weekend than we made all of last year. So that for me was um, a realization. Again, I you know I'm a big thinker, but it's like you have to think big, but you also have to plan big. So now I'm not saying go and get an office space that fits five thousand people today, but certainly think one year ahead and push uh you know push your mind to think what would that look like if we had a million dollars a day in sales um and and kind of prepare at least mentally is your are your supply is your supply chain prepared to scale very quickly um is your team prepared to scale very quickly where will you hire people you should always be hiring you should always have people that are interested in working with you um, are your systems and software and everything that you're using scalable? What happens if Facebook shuts down? Do you have a backup plan? Do you have backup ad accounts? Um, just thinking through, uh, thinking through all of that and saying, okay, what is the worst case scenario? What's the best case scenario? If you look at the best case scenario, it generally leads you to the worst case scenarios because the best case scenarios, you make $10 million in one day in sales. What does that look like? Are your servers scalable for that? Uh, is Shopify going to shut you down? Um, do you have the cash flow to float that for inventory? Um, so I always say the best time to get a loan from a bank is when you don't need it. The best time to get a line of credit from the bank is when you don't need it. The best time to raise money is when you don't need it. So I always say plan for holiday season every month. And what we realize is that uh, December is going to be much larger than November, which totally shocked us. Uh, we thought that Black Friday and Cyber Monday were just going to set November on its own path. December is just every day is just bigger and bigger. And it, it, there's nothing going on other than there's Christmas, but there's nothing going on. So even for me, it's like, OK, we need more products. That's the other thing, too, is pushing additional products out so that your customers have more touch points with your brand. Uh, that's something I learned this holiday season, um, making it easy for customers to shop the deals. So instead of having these complex deals, just do a BOGO or just do a buy one, get one half off or just do a straight up 30 percent off the store. Don't have them put in the code or auto populate the code. Make it as simple as possible and make sure that your entire team is in line with your plans. Because as a CEO, a lot of times we're thinking about sales, we want to drive sales, we want to drive sales. And the rest of the team is keeping the, is, is shoveling the coal into the train and we're just trying to push on the gas. So you gotta make sure that your team is aligned, otherwise you will burn them out. And so that's something that we've in, um, instituted is having a really strong communication Slack channel where we're talking about upcoming promotions. Um, if anyone's worried, you know, oh, I don't know if we have enough tape. I don't know if we have enough packaging. I wanna make sure, and we use a, a tool called Airtable 
uh, which we love. And it keeps track of all of our inventory uh, from tape to staples to paper clips to coffee cups to toilet paper. Right. It's like everything is in there to to, uh, you know, got to make sure the coffee machine is stocked as people are working. So we use Airtable to keep track of all that. And I assign who is in charge of which areas. And when we plan, we say, OK, if we sell a million dollars a day. What does that look like? How much toilet paper are we using? How much, you know, how much printer? Uh, uh, for example, we have burned out multiple industrial printers already for labels. And uh, because we're we're printing five thousand uh, labels a day uh, for, for orders and the machines just aren't made to do that. I didn't know that. So, you know, now I, I said, Let, let's do this. Let's order 10 machines and just have them in the closet. And when one dies, kick it to the side, throw in the next one. It's like a machine gun. You've got to have the clips ready. So you've got to make sure that your army and your troops have extra clips. They've got their bulletproof vest on. They've got wa a water pack. They've got their sunscreen on. They're comfortable. They've got their boots tied right. So just really lining that up has been probably the biggest realization for me because I come from a background of software and ad tech where if we get a million customers in one day, as long as our, our software is scalable and there aren't any huge bugs, it's not that big of a difference. We're in a physical products business. You're dealing with a lot of different variables, especially with international shipping. You have consolidators, USP, USPS, um, you know, they have delays. Canada Post has a strike. There are all these things that you have to look for that you don't have control over, but you want to make sure that your customers are also in line. Uh, you know, Fashion Nova sent out a similar email uh, like we did saying, um, listen, we're a couple days behind. We appreciate your, your patience. Um, and, you know, if you want a refund, let us know. That will push you to the back of the line, though, if you come back to order. Um, just things like that, giving gift cards out for free, um, just to, to say thank you for your patience. So lining those systems up, I think, is very, very important. And you have, even if you have one order a day or a million orders a day, you want to be thinking at the million order because that's going to naturally bring up your realistic worst case scenario. If we have a million orders a day, the worst case scenario is the printer breaks. If we have a million orders a day, the worst case scenario is my team's going to burn out. We have a million orders a day. The worst case is merchant processing is going to go down. So look at the best case. That's exciting. But also think of the worst case because I think entrepreneurs a lot of times think of the best case. Like, oh, man, you know, everybody's talking like if I get 100,000 visitors, 3% conversion rate, I'll get this. But also think of what if you get 100,000 visitors and the add to cart button is not working? You know, so those are the, that's what I would uh, uh, urge everybody to go through that process the first of every month. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about Vegas. We've got a comment here uh, about seeing us in Vegas. I'm super excited about that. But I want to, if, if, if you guys are listening to this right now and you have any uh, like questions for Josh, we'll have a little bit of time at the end to answer a few of the really good questions. So ju just throw us some questions about anything you're interested in Josh's business, his mindset, and, uh, and we'll get to those towards the end. But I wanted to just talk a little bit. I, you know, when we planned our first Vegas show, uh, you, one of the first people I called, I was like, we got to get Josh. I've heard he's amazing on stage. Uh, what, how are you feeling about Vegas? What are you planning on throwing down on the stage there? Yeah, I think I want to talk about the, the progression, the transition from, you know, programmer, designer, affiliate marketer, um, the mindset shifts that are required to go through that uh, because you, you're dealing with a lot of variables. You're dealing with a, a scarcity mindset versus an abundant mindset. You're thinking of systems, processes, scale. You're thinking of, oh, I could hire this guy or I can just do it myself and keep the five grand a month. Or, you know, there's all these little demons that are running around in your head that are preventing you from thinking big, thinking large. And uh, I've been able to crush those, you know, at, at 25, 26 years old because I am ruthless with my mind. And, um, you know, I always say, look, you got to You got to remember your mind is your bitch and not the other way around. And so you can control your thoughts, which control your, your feelings, your actions and emotions. So it's, this is not any, this is not like some woo woo, wah, wah yoga shit. This is like, like focus on your business. What is actually holding you back? And you have to think about it moving from, uh, if, you know, selling other people's products to selling your own products to, uh, you know, if you're reselling products or private labeling, white labeling to actually developing your own products to developing your own brand. And, and, and that's if you're into the physical stuff, if you're into e-commerce, great. If you're not, maybe it doesn't pertain to you, but the mindset still does. The, the mindset of thinking bigger, acting bigger, and how do you fill in those gaps? And then, of course, um, nothing is complete without some tactics in terms of, you know, here's how you go and find good people. 
uh, the best people for you. Here's here's the stuff you should be reading just in time. You know, don't go and read the four hour work week. Don't go and read all this bullshit that's going to distract you. You go on Google and type in exact. When I have a problem, I go and type it in exactly, and I say, um, you know, how do I track the metrics for a CFO? What are the KPIs as a CEO? Should I be keeping track for a CFO? I go for just in time at that moment, um, and I get try to, and then I devour everything that I can. So that I think the how to think is really because I've learned that from the people I follow, my mentors, my friends. That is what has made me successful. It's the how people think. That's why I always seek out people that disagree with me because I want to understand how do they think, so that I can adopt that mental model, that framework, so that my framework becomes much more complete. So I'm hoping that if I open up my brain. If I do some 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 surgery here, some neurosurgery surgery, and I let you see how I approach situations, how I approach goal setting, how I approach hiring, how I approach scaling, how I manage millions of dollars a month of media buying, and and the mindset behind that, I think if you can, uh, if, if pieces of that that people can adopt, at the very least, it will make them look introspectively and say, what do I actually want? What can I do? Can I take my e-commerce to offline? What does that look like? Is it worthwhile doing that? We're running podcast ads now, radio ads, TV ads. We're doing billboards in January. Um, you know, um, we're sponsoring the Phoenix Suns uh, basketball team. Uh, nice. You know, all of the offline stuff. I'm talking to uh, MMA so that every single mouthpiece that they used to fight will be snow blue with the white snow logo and snow. So every fighter, no matter who it is. Um, it's the first time they're doing a complete sponsorship over the mouthpieces, and I want to bring it to boxing as well. So every fighter in the world will start the fight with a snow mouthpiece in their mouth. Uh, it'll be bloody by the end of it all, but snow will be right in there. So those are just like the the thinking behind those kind kinds of conversations. How do you structure deals when you're working with celebrities, retailers, resellers? We sell to dental offices, med spas, hair salons. Thinking through all the points of distribution of your business instead of just Shopify. Shopify is great. Amazon's great. Phenomenal. But there are billions and billions of dollars outside of those two channels that ha- that you don't have to run any Facebook ads for. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you know, we're we're being placed in 1,500 uh, luxury spas throughout China, and my Facebook ad cost is zero. Um, and they have 1.5 million sh- uh, uh, members who pay 3,000 a year. Uh, to join this spa and they have 15,000 uh, employees and they're all based on commission. So 15,000 Chinese women who are commission only selling snow to 1.5 million affluent Chinese women. All I have to, my CPA is their commission. I don't have to run ads. I don't, I don't have to do anything. Um, and so those are the, the, that's the mindset of thinking, but see, I got that deal because I, I put my money where my mouth was and got these ce- different celebrity deals um, the building the brand, leveling up your brand, um, you know, hiring big agencies, right? Working with, think of brands that you love. You know, if you love Casper, the mattress company, if you love uh, whatever it is, whatever company you like, uh, you like your website design, all that, find out their agency and go and hire that agency and say, I want to build a brand like this. I want people to come to my website and feel that it's, it's this way or this, you know, if you sell rugged stuff, I want them to come and make, I want it to feel like, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, REI sports, or I want it to feel like this. So that feeling, it's an intangible thing, but it's a huge advantage. So anyway, I think long story short, this channels of distributions, uh, mindset shifts through the transition of going from, uh, wanting to become rich to becoming rich to becoming wealthy as a business owner and creating lots of opportunity for your employees, your customers, your partners, your strategic partners, your affiliates, just kind of moving up the food chain and what is required to do that. I think that's what I would. Uh, that's what I'm gonna try to focus on. That's amazing. So talk a little bit about the. It, so so we just had a question here uh, that you answered about about self learning, self education. You you talked literally about jumping, throwing like throwing that stuff right into Google. Like why not? Uh, and and really going after that stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about the the environment we find ourselves in. Obviously the the opportunity is there. The oppor- there's and you're showing that there's there's an opportunity to challenge Amazon. There's there's you know there's opportunities. Uh, out the wazoo. But what is what's the situation? Like, what's the imperative that people need to realize in the next five years with their e-commerce business? Yeah. So I think that one thing, um, one thing I'll say, one thing you know, 
people understand very quickly about me is I really don't give a shit what people think about me. I just say what's on my mind. But um, my, I may be wrong. I may be right. I don't know. I don't care. But what I think is that uh, drop shipping is a great way uh, to learn Facebook ads, to scale a business, to use that money to double down and create your own brand and all that. I love it. I love, love, love it. The thing is, once people start making money, they, they are afraid to change something because they finally figured something out. It's like, I finally figured it out. I can finally move in that nice condo. I can finally lease a Lambo. And now I don't want to mess that up. What I, you know, I was, um, for example, we're doing a, uh, working on a deal with Cardi B. And uh, I was, I wanted to, I wanted to go buy a McLaren. It's a $500 McLaren. And I love cars. And I was like, oh, I was like, I want to buy this right now. I was like, impulse. And I was like, wait, stop. I'd rather do a deal with Cardi B because one day she's going to buy me 10, 10 McLaren P1s, right? It's like that, that delay of gratification and that willingness to change um, is so, so important. So the imperative I want to say is that uh, Amazon is moving toward one hour shipping and <laughs> from China is two weeks. Um, customers, I know our customers get pissed if it takes more than three days to get a product. And I'm like, yo, chill, you live in the Amazon River and we're shipping from Arizona. Like, it's going to take more than three days. And they literally are pissed because Amazon is trained. Amazon used the public's money to really create the, one of the best competitive advantages I've ever seen. They used billions and billions of dollars they raised through their IPO and being public to lose money on shipping, to build the infrastructure ahead of everybody else so that when someone else wants to compete with them, they cannot. You have to use Amazon Prime to fulfill your own packages. They did it with AWS as well. So um, I love the server side of things. Jeff Bezos is one of the one of the best thinkers in the world, and he is ruthless in the way that he thinks and he executes. He doesn't give a shit what people think. He doesn't. He just really doesn't care what his shareholders think. He knows what ultimately what they want is a lot of value, and he's going to build that. So I would say the the kind of uh, you know, cloaking and all that stuff has kind of been dying and, and, and e-commerce kind of the drop shipping. Facebook is going to become more and more expensive. It's never going to get cheaper. Um, only once they open up WhatsApp and ins other Instagram stuff. The other thing is on the influencer side, and this is hard. This is hard for a lot of people to understand, but Facebook changed their algorithm to increase their <laughs> earnings per user, which meant that pages that had a million likes, you post something, you may get... 2,000 likes on it. You, know, you got a million fans, you might get 2,000 likes on it, probably less. Before, you used to post it, Viral Nova, the website, you know, they, they would post something and they'd get massive love from their organic reach. Organic reach is zero now, right? Because they pushed everybody to paid. Really good job. Now that everyone's pushed to paid, the CPMs are really high. They're never gonna go down. It's happened with Google. It's happening to Instagram next. Instagram will update their algorithm it will kill every influencer that doesn't have a brand, that isn't a real celebrity, because they're gonna to come to me and say, Josh, I'll give me 3,000, I'll post for Snow. I'm like, you got a million fans, but your reach is 2%. I'd rather just create an interest targeting for your fans, run the ads myself, track it all. Why would I give you $3,000? I'll give you $200 to take a photo with the kit, and uh, that's all you're gonna get, and we'll run it in our ads. So I'm really excited for that, because influencer marketing I believe is hyperinflated at the moment because the Instagram is not making any money. When I pay uh, uh, an influencer to try our product out, um, Instagram gets zero. I don't write Instagram a check. So think about that. You have a house, okay? And you have your friends over and they're selling shit from your living room and you get nothing from it. That's not gonna happen for long. Um, that's why I always say never build a business on rented land you have to, and, and they've built a business on rented land. If they don't evolve quickly enough, all of those influencers will not know what to do. They don't have a business. Uh, they don't have anything to sell. All they're doing is posting pictures of maybe snow, but you know, generally it's gonna be, most of our posts are customers uh, and the way that we've done it. But they're posting pictures of tea, you know, tea that makes you poop, you know, all these crappy products that is diluting their brand because there's a hyperinflation moment going on right now so I would say influencer marketing, drop shipping, you've got to think of the customer. How can I get it to them faster? How can I provide more value? How can I improve my packaging? How can I improve my customer service? 
this is going to become so, so important um, that customers now, and the last thing I'm going to mention, this is more of a macro thing, is that for the first time, if I want shoes for tall guys who hike but also drive Lamborghinis, I can find a shop that sells Lambo hiking shoes, right? It's like a very specific product. So I want people to think of go specific, then open up, right? There was no teeth whitening. Now we're going, we got toothpaste, mouthwash, floss, boom, 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 boom. Start hyper-focused, be the best hyper-focused, Lambo hiking shoes, and now you've got gear, hats, doo -doo -doo, it, it grows over time. Something hyper-niche, in a big market though, but hyper-niche, and scale that out. It's the first time in the world where people can go onto Amazon and find a specific product. Before, you'd have to open the Sears catalog, you'd have to go to Sears, you'd have to go to the store. This, this is huge for entrepreneurs to understand because it, it uh, breaks down the monopolies because now consumers are in charge. It goes up now. So anyway, those are, that's a macro one, but we can talk more about that as well. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. Facebook, that's what to me is so interesting about Facebook as a marketing tool, why it's considered so dangerous by, by some of the powers that be. It's not so much because of all the data it has, but it, it is that, but it's also because you have access to it as an individual. As an individual, you can actually leverage that power as well. That's what sort of makes it democratic in a way, or it's you know obviously market driven. But if you if you have funding, you can get your message out there about almost anything. That's right. Great time to be alive. Uh, fantastic. So Josh is the real deal. Josh, are you going to bring the iStack team some snow kits? Some of my employees want to know. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it snow for sure. We're gonna let it snow. <laughs> I love it. You're gonna make, let it snow. In a lot of blizzard in Las Vegas, an absolute blizzard. So if you want to come hear Josh to talk, you want to hear, you want to ask him some questions during Q&A, you want to have a beer with them during the speaker's dinner uh, or during the, the happy hour that everyone gets to our speaker's dinner is actually sold out right now. Um, but you got to come, got to come to Vegas. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be an amazing time. Any parting words for why people, why you think people should come to Las Vegas, Josh? You know, I, I realized that being around like-minded people, people that are growth minded, whether someone makes a dollar a day or a billion dollars a day, uh, being around that energy is incredibly contagious and you get to go back to your cave and build. So come out, come out of your cave, come have some cocktails with us, come learn some cool shit that you can actually use. Um, and let's have a good time. Unreal. This has just brightened my, my holiday season. I'll let you get back to your, your Christmas shopping. Make sure you, you buy some uh, some great things for your friends and family. You share the wealth, uh, and I hope you have a really. Uh, I hope you get. I hope you get a little downtime over the holidays. I don't know if that's possible. Will, will you be able to keep, keep some eggnog? Oh, I love eggnog. Put a little brandy in it. So good. All right, man. Well, we'll do it up in Vegas. I can't wait. Uh, thanks again for your time today. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Talk soon. Take care.